Basebe na wanyabu kwe mnugwe mnundi ukusoke de dala Nsoka ukubani lizana te Mo programu eno Egeno kubange mbumbu ja Kwa kusawa wazino kutukila kusawa kuminemu uh, Eno yebuganda convention Eyo mnundi ukusoke de dala Eyo ya e, 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 zoom scientific Eda tuwe waza office yombaka Wasaba saja mu UK ni Ireland Wamuone office ya Yombaka wasaba saja mu Canadia no kwe torola mnetherlands uo na. Uh, Tuweba za enteka teka yoru chiko wabasobodo kubanti muteke kaburu unji omukolo guno ogugeno kubanga guwa kuhiga ate nga guwa vya nsimbi development. Kwe kula kula nya. Joku wanga tuteke kamu oruzungu na uluganda kuro kubanti iba nafe abamu abali kumukutu guno baka luvirivu wamu wa okutege uluganda uo na. Na inga tuja kubatutambuli ya wamu. Nkakasa, nchuli burunji kusaidi yeyo. Uh, teka teka mpambu, tuwena kutambula kumisini jairi hili. Uh, Tuwa wendo mfumu na jizobu no, wamu uh, ne wini nantege omukungu, mu London, uh, tena angi James Muga, feba emu sibo mkolo guno, unakuluwa lero. Tusaba, boba, oinako choge no kuogera, oja kuwa ni kuwa mkono, digitale, petuja kuwa tunulayo, okulaba nti, waliwo ayagalo kubaka kutayogera era tujja kumanya nti waliwo aine ensonga awonno tugenda kugulawo nente kateka iyo kuguno eri katonda to kumanti tutambula bulunji nga bitugenda kutesaako bitugenda kugabana ko wano ola lero biso kubanga bitu yamba nga ate omukama yatukulembedde mu kino shekalantani olikiria Ndikiri ya mpuri ya bulunji. Mpuri ya bulunji. Nyo, 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 tala. Nzanzo kuu, nzanzo kuu uliza. Nangu wentio. Katuonge, omukolo guno, eri katonda. Ate, tamble, item edako. Check. E, ntandike. Ntandika, sebo. Ah, so, kukwe waza, haba testi, testi mwena. Na haba liku mkolo guno guna. Jimuli. Awa kungu wa sabu sajia wa waka mungeri yuna Evitiba wa mimiba wa du Olefunga wa wisera Sijia kuronda Sijia kuronda gana chinomu ni chinomu Tue gaira omutonzi kawamba gulu Awu kese zanga tuduwaramu Tu sawa omukoro kwa febu na ugochiti wa Ugumumi wa reviru nji Ebegasa eguanga yuganda na waganda Tu sabira uwa kwa kwa Uganda na dala enti kwa sabu sija kwa kwa maburu nyo tunti manak kama na tayari tuwa katikiro wa Uganda na wamio kavi na wamili sabi abataka tu ba sabira ndi kusaka sabira kuna abataka wa Uganda uwezo wa limbona mukama na njia kuru abasasiri ba vitu mbulungi tu sabira wa kungu wa kwa watu fugam Mudaespura, mwina jimuli, kutudishon jimuwa muuganda, nuuganda, kusawa nanyi ni guru, haviringa wama, noba nyuburwa duho mulembe, utambula kati. Kusawa, nise kusawa ina, katuunda agamba, jimu sawa mbanu kura. Tuwani semikono jafinga, tukusawa, tukwa gara tujise, ngate tuswade. Wototu wa ananatuwa. Uwa wa kusabi na wa kusabi na ife tu kusabi na tukwe gaia Uwa wa gama atu uumu saba mbawa atu uwa uluji na uramu Tusabi na waganda wa fe awafude Mwambira e jumwa ulide Tuwa sabi na umukama wa wechi umule chiru unji Na wa urade mufi mungu wa wasuse Uru urade buine dagara okuja kwa wukade Tu sawa, tu sawa vila omukungu wa fuwa wano. Mbaka wa sawa sajia ni dipute we. Ni wa minister we wakura na bu. Na wa antu, awa mnyamba kumbini uju wa Uganda. Mungu wa mwesu nse zama, nyevi roze viru unji. Evi ukuma, e guanga. Guanga Uganda. E guanga gwe mchua gwe nsi ya fi Uganda. Na mumu kote mumuli wangu kote emandu so Mumutu wabia tuwatu wabia fena 
tusaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abawe obulungi nomale otuba tusaba ngafe abampuliza muinza kuda mu kigamo nti amin wo saba no gamba amin bejwa toge de mwenna katonda abidda mu de mu nti amin 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 tusabiro ba kama kwa buganda amin 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 Netu sabira abakungu ba febona. Amin. Amin. Netu sabira na fefena. Amin. Mungu atusa siri mungeli zona. Amin. Netu wonyo wura dobo muri mbo wuri wakati no wuna jia. Amin. Aba na ba fata na ba fumbi 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 Bugani ni mo maso inte kati kaza kati kiro mungu azitwari burungi mirembe ni kati kaza wakungu abali ebuwe ni munda na dala bataka bila ebi bimere mirembe atumire sabu sija kwa kwa no rukoma rona maso moji Allah tu kwe gaza moe chuo mudemu chami amen kwa yangu kumia o uwe funda wese lakadi zika kwa mpadi saga de kasusa Sawa mukuru bunge nde bunifu MC kudiza kazi ndaro, mungu wa aku akuwe abilite, mukuru bunge nde bunifu ni bana ba kuyabaku. Mesale yokuula marunji, tu yanza nyote yanza lige, zita mukwani zita budi omo chino mu mucho, eno yebuganda convention, yomurundi yokusokele dala ya digital, scientific, tuzako Uganda national anthem. Olimbo le gwanga atera mangu nyo tukube ekitibwa kya Buganda awo tusoro kubanga tutambula oluvanyuma omkungu wini mu bwombo bifo bwe kitalo nja kusaba weteketeke okwandula no kwaniriza uh, katuchaza ku Zoom ono ngatumaze okuyimba enyimba ezo bili ate tutambule okujja Chitiwa chabuganda, chichidako, asobolo kuhimilida, aimilidewo na, tuwe wombe ke.
nzanyo tuyanzirege tweteketeke okuba anti tufuna obaka kaza ngira kusaba mukungu weni nante kino bwombe otu otu otwanirize ombaka wa saba sajja mu UK ni Ireland weni ne anzisa nyo mwami kensi muga tuyanzisa okutwa ala kolokuno Gaya was it? Or do I live? By seven, I am a to Era, the Era, the Oku, 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 Ye mubaka wa saba saja mubungereza ne island. Omwami atuombia mwamu tuwe okola program weno. Era yowe chitibwa omubaka Ronald Lutaya. Sebo mwami Ronald Lutaya tukisanyu kide era akazinda aloka kwa sebo. Obugalo, obugalo banani. <laughs> <laughs> ne aziza mukungu wini nantege okusoke radala nyagala okwaniriza katikiro kuba manyikwali katikiro wa buganda charles peter maiga cabinet Ya Saba Sajja Ababaka Basava Sajja Mwena Nadala Abavudi Mumawanga Kativu Erichiro Fenobuke de Nairi Bacha Richiro Nava OHT Boy Stella Muyinda Oe Canada Nava OHT Wa Omulongo Kato Kajuvi Boston Ndaba OHT wa Nelson Mugenyi Owe Scandinavia Ndaba OHT wa Engineer Moses Mayanja Aida Ho Navy Tundu Vivionda Nava Kungu Mwena Avali Kuno Ate Ndava Nava Nava Avagenda Okogera Orwale Ru Ndavie Yu uh, Peter Ryombia Alibu Gere Nae Atu said Daya ya So Si <laughs> Tuma Tuma Banaye Avazana Nava Sajja Vasava Sajja Mwena Tubani Riza. I'm going to switch to BBC. 
I would like to recognize the presence of our cultural leaders, uh, other cultural leaders from Uganda. I can see the representative of Mukama of Bunyoro, Daisy Biaruhanga. You are most welcome. I would also like to recognize uh, our Amir, Sheikh Kalantani, and thanks for that wonderful prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome. This is a wonderful day for us and a very important one. This is the Buganda Convention Europe the first one in this, uh, in the, the way we have arranged it. Initially, we had organized this to be uh, a physical meeting in the heart of London, uh, but it wasn't to be. Uh, COVID intervened, and so we are meeting uh, on Zoom which is fantastic. We still are uh, meeting and uh, we can see each other. So that's very good. And yes, I mentioned Buganda Convention Europe because Brexit hasn't happened. It's, uh, I think we've got a few weeks left for COVID, uh, Brexit to happen. So we are still part of Europe. I also want to recognize the represented cultural leader from Teso, representative of Emoli Moli, Michael Kwalinga. Michael, you can wave to the people there. You are most welcome. So we have laid on an exciting menu for you today. Uh, and this menu is, has got uh, a range of uh, topics, and there is a reason for that. The reason we are, we have ensured that we have a variety of topics is because the challenges facing Uganda, we know there is no one silver bullet that can solve uh, the challenges of Buganda. We know that it's a range of things we need to address and there are interdependencies in these challenges that are facing Buganda. So part of today is that we want you to see the interrelationships to discover how something works by understanding how it is affected by what surrounds it. Most people will recognize this proverb, uh, the one about being in a situation where you can't see the wood for the trees. Today we want our America to precisely help you change the focus of attention to the forest so that you can see the trees in their context. Understanding the forest gives new and powerful insights about the trees. Such insights are completely inaccessible if one concentrates on individual trees. What do I mean? We, 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 we sometimes talk a lot in parables. Well, take industry, for example. For industry, you need finance but you also need the raw materials. And uh, a lot of the raw materials come from land. And we know we have had a few problems uh, in uh, Buganda and in Uganda generally recently with the land. There is a, a lot of land grabbing going on. With industry, we need markets. But also, there is regulation 
that governs industry. And with the regulation, you are talking about governance. So all these things are actually interrelated. And of course, you need a farmer like uh, Peter Liombia, who will talk to us later, who will produce the raw materials, especially if uh, what the product comes from uh, such uh, raw materials that are grown uh, on land. So hopefully, this convention will give us a sense of what is going on in Buganda. It may also help us assess how, as some commentators say, how Uganda has contributed to the underdevelopment of Buganda. And then you can take a view as to how this could be resolved. So this is an opportunity for us to mark out the stable and embark on a new path for Buganda's economic and political development because we want our people eventually to have better living standards that they have now. So by looking at all the topics, the presentations that you will get today, you may decide that the system that we have, that we inherited from colonial system, the system of governance, while this system gives us, gives Buganda a seat at the table, it may not give Buganda an opportunity to be heard, which is no good because we must be heard. And so maybe one of the resolutions for today would be to work hard to see that we have a better system of governance. Ultimately, we want to be the kingdom that we know we can be. And with those few comments, uh, f those few words, uh, I would like to welcome you once again uh, to this convention and hope you enjoy the day and learn a lot and have some takeaways. Awangalinyo omuterega sabasajja kabaka wa Buganda. I declare this meeting open. Wewalinyo, wewalile dala. Sevo katucha za kumukutu kuno kwa Zoom. Ate wewale ibigambi bi warm. Nkaka sa mulimu takeaways in piti livu. Letugieno kutuwala. Awono, zina mkubaniza mzei James Muga o mkuba dereva o mkolo guno wamu no mkongu weni nantege ali mlandani. Na enze insi nzidewa no mkweta landani Watford. Awono kina kutamla kumisini jairi. Kambanizi na te mbagaya mtule ntende kubanga emere ya matu nyingi nyo tituke na kujima lao. Nso kudamu kwewa zaba advertisers habatu yambia kula wa niteka teke yena so era nso wide nti uh, Biba tutademu, bija kutuyamba, okulaba nti omukolo guta ambula china wada. Bija genanga tufuna kubulangu wawe, mpola mpola, nga tuta ambula. Atela jibuja maseyo, tuja kubanga tuwea ulamu, nga enteka tekawe tuja kubanga tuja anjula, ugera mu groups, eze nja ulo, kubanga okuhiga kunji, etusura kubira kubiteka mulundi, mulundi kumu yona wamo. Eno, yebukana convention, 2020, eso kere dala, Omulama kutambulira tukuba tochi nti Buganda mu 2050 neva efanetia era enebere etegedeka etegede, etegede etia awonno twetegeke eh, okuba twiga ebisingawo mu um, um, docu documentary zikiro kubanga zijja uh, mu maso ngena kwanjula okubanjulira omukuru adako okutuli sechi gambo ntunuli de 
omukuru Robert Wagwa Nsibirwa nga yaddako uh, ku program eno ono no ono muyivu nyo era ebyensusso ate musajja mukulembeze ate musajja mulimi ate nga minister wa kabaka kakati no ye agera kusunulira opportunities ezili mu Buganda bichi byoyinzo kusimba kesira no gamba ntia anze Buganda we we nkolachi we we nsibira we njoku kula kulanira tuletegeke okubanga tuliza enteka teka jage nokuba okutuwa okutu okutuwa angula mubyo bya nkula kulana bwa maliriza sija gamba ntine bwe ntema nedda ebiddako tujja kubanga tubyetegeza nga uh, presentation ya WHT wa wagwa nsibirwa e wedde Good afternoon, everyone participating in this year's um, Buganda Kingdom Diaspora webinar. I'm happy to be here to speak to you directly, the community of Baganda and people from Uganda and everybody interested in the Uganda Kingdom about the investment opportunities and ideas that do exist in the Kingdom. The kingdom, as you are aware, is almost a thousand years old. And the kingdom of Uganda is in the center of Uganda. So we spread out from the capital city within a radius of between 80 kilometers to 100 kilometers outside the city. So the gross domestic product of the country of Uganda 70% comes from Buganda Kingdom. His Majesty the Kabaka is the biggest landlord in the Uganda, and that's one of our key resources as a kingdom. Other key resources we have are being in the center of action of the country, Uganda, and Uganda being in the center of Great Lakes. That gives us so many opportunities as many people from Eastern Congo, South Sudan, Rwanda and Burundi all have to go through Buganda if they are going to Nairobi or to Mombasa and vice versa. That gives us a unique positioning. And the third aspect of our strength economically and investment wise is the royal subjects of the kingdom. Uh, the royal subjects of the kingdom that are always able and willing to support the work of the kingdom. We also have wonderful leadership headed by His Majesty the Kawako of Buganda and the Katikiri of Buganda and the cabinet and all the local the leaders in the structure of Buganda, the village. All these allow to give a predictable, structured and professional leadership. Right now, the kingdom is open for business and for the last seven years we have been able to have an investment policy if you wish to invest with us as a kingdom we have an investment policy that you can follow and we have had tremendous success in partnering and doing investment over the last seven or so years we have um, pedigree partnering with multinationals um, for example we are now manufacturing beer for the kingdom called Ingule, and we are doing it with Diageo, which is an international company, and the local company in Uganda is Uganda Breweries. We are doing mineral water for the kingdom called Orendo with Vero beverages. We, are, we have uh, an estate uh, of high end housing in Chigo along the shores of Lake Victoria, Mirembe Villas, with uh, Hanan Goji from China and so on and so forth. So we have a pedigree now, we have uh, an experience and we, we can talk from a point of experience on how you could partner with the kingdom in terms of investment, in terms of commerce, and even in terms of um, social development. Right now we are partnering with UNAIDS and uh, His Majesty the Kabaka is the ambassador for UNAIDS and we are doing tremendous work in transforming the fate of many millions of Baganda and Ugandans when it comes to reducing 
the infection of AIDS. We have been looking at fistula, sickle cells. So we are not only partnering for investment in commercial uh, and brick and mortar, but also doing initial development. So just to get down to you for you, um, members there, if you are in the diaspora and you want to come back, where are the opportunities and where, uh, which ideas can I give you to come back and do investment back home? The first one, on a personal level, even on a commercial level, is real estate. As you may already be aware, uh, His Majesty desired or pleased that we establish a high-end community along the shores of Lake Victoria, between uh, Serena, Lake Victoria, in Ichigo, um, and to have a high-end residential community. And so far, we have about 100 housing units there. Many of them have been taken up. And the, the, the projection we shall have about over 300 mixed development in that area. We have five bedroom villas, four bedroom villas, so three bedroom villas. We have bungalows and we have apartments. And then we have a shopping center. So the community is growing, well planned, high end. And there, if you wish to acquire a modern housing outfit, uh, Mirembe Villa is, is, is ready for you. And as I said, a hundred, a hundred units have been now been uh, constructed and occupied, and another 200 are on the way to being constructed. So if you want personal investment, that's an area you can invest and have a villa, a bungalow, an apartment in a well-planned, a very convenient and great ambience uh, estate. The other area you can personally invest in, His Majesty, pleased that we have affordable housing for his subjects. And the kingdom with Uganda Land Board spearheading this uh, is constructing affordable housing in St. Emma. Already 80 houses have been bought before even breaking ground. But as I speak today, seven sample houses have been set up for, mem for people to view, but already 80 individuals have been able to pay for this affordable housing in St. Emma. Now, you can come because there are going to be about 500 units of affordable housing in that community with schools, with community centers, well-planned community for the affordable housing. We have one-bedroom housing units, two-bedroom, and three-bedroom housing units. So, again, on a personal level, you could come and acquire a unit or units uh, to your desire and capacity to purchase. Now, we, this, this mode of affordable housing is going to also go to go to Mayembe Gambogo in Impiji, and also we have, uh, also Buganda Land Board is going to do the same with other partners in Masaka. Now, we have partners we are working with in St. Emma for the affordable housing and in Chigo, but we don't have partners yet for the affordable housing we want to do in uh, Mayembe Gambogo in Impiji and also in Masaka. So if you have money and you want to partner with the kingdom to roll out these estates in Impiji and Masaka and elsewhere, please do ab approach Buganda Investments and Commercial Undertakings Limited or the Ministry of Finance, Investment, Planning and Economic Development. And we shall be glad to take through you our partnership model, our partnership agreement, our partnership policy. So there is... Uh, there is uh, an opportunity there for you as an investor. We have more opportunities in real estate. We have master planned to develop the land next to Mugandrada and Katwe, from Mugandrada all the way to the roundabout of Chibuye. If you have money, we can invest with you. We have a mixed use building, grand building, call it a mall, call it a shopping center, Kezimbira which we could develop with you. We are looking for a partner to develop that whole area close to five acres. So if you are looking to put your money in the entry of the city, where the action is, again, Namlon Investments and the Minister of Finance and Investment, Uganda Kingdom, we should be able to work with you to realize that dream. We have that opportunity there. We have land on Mutundwe, 
about 30 acres which we have master planned into a satellite city, into a satellite uh, settlement community. It is one of the uh, highest hills in the city. Uh, you, when you are there, you have a 360 view of Kampala city. We are looking for partners and investors to develop that satellite city or settlement community. We are looking for high-end boutique hotels. We are looking for high-end settlement in terms of accommodation and housing. We are looking for having a medical site and, of course, a shopping center, an entertainment center. And we have a master plan we have come up with, which we can discuss with a prospective, a prospective investor. So if you are interested again, it's very hard to get an, an encumbered 30 acres about only five kilometers from the city. That also is available for us to do. So in real estate, there are many opportunities. And uh, the last one in real estate I will talk about because of time. We have a lot of stone deposits in the kingdom. And we have done studies about these stones. So if you are an investor who is coming to set up to do quarrying work, to do block work, to do road construction, again, we could partner to excavate and mine these stones, and then you are able to acquire that resource and do business. So those are the ideas and opportunities in your estate. Let me touch briefly on education sector. As you are aware, the kingdom has a primary school, has several secondary schools, has about three technical institutions, and has a university. Now, the university, the technical institution, and the secondary schools, they have a challenge of accommodation of students and pupils. So we have an opportunity there to get investors who are able to construct residential uh, houses or residential accommodation for students going to university, technical institute, and also to these secondary schools. So you could construct it, and then you'll be guaranteed occupancy from these institutions. So you could have a partnership with the institutions to construct uh, places of residence for these students, and then the university, the technical institutes, and the secondary schools could give you the clients uh, through a partnership with them. They could provide land, and you do the construction, and they provide the clients. And you agree on a model on how you could share revenue until you are paid back with your uh, profits. With the pandemic, um, now everybody is looking at how we can be able to reach students more efficiently, more conveniently, and more cheaply. So if you are an investor who has an idea on how to establish educational platforms, online education platforms, video education platforms, digital education platforms, there is space there under the education sector for Buganda. The Kingdom has a telecom company called K2 Telecom. Uh, we are looking for an investor and partner to go with us to FinTech. We have worked out an idea on how we can do fintech as a Kingdom Telecom company, and we are looking for an investor who could be interested in joining us to realize this uh, idea uh, of uh, fintech. We have the market. We have the market, a very loyal market, a very effective market, but we need a platform of fintech to be able to earn more money, but also provide convenience of access in terms of payment, in terms of saving, and in terms of uh, uh, receipts of funds and disbursements of funds using our platform of the telecom. We have some concepts, we have some ideas, and we are looking for investors in that field. It's not only commercial we are looking at, there are also ideas and opportunities in the medical field. Uh, one of the things the Kingdom is looking at is establishing a state-of-the-art specialized referral hospital of the, for the Kingdom. This is being demanded by the subjects of His Majesty, but of course even the commercial uh, studies around us, being in the center of Great Lakes as a Kingdom and looking at the amount of money 
we have in medical tourism, going to India, going to Thailand, going to Europe, America, Israel, South Africa. The sheer number of people that go and send out dollars in those countries for even simple and minor uh, ailments, it gives the justification for setting up a high-end, state-of-the-art specialized hospital. The Kingdom has, has identified three areas where this could be done, and we are looking for investors who can partner with the Kingdom to establish this medical facility. So that's another area that, if you are interested, we could look at. Then we have tourism. Tourism, we are the biggest in Uganda, and hope, and I think in East Africa, we are the biggest source of tourism of heritage. Nobody come close to us when it comes to culture and heritage tourism. Would like to partner with somebody to develop and grow the culture and heritage tourism in the kingdom. We feel we are not even at 1% exploitation of this aspect. And if we get somebody interested in this area, the kingdom has been able to collect and document all the sites, all the culture and heritage aspects of the kingdom. We have been able even to publish the book, but the book we published is only containing about 10% of the actual material we have on the ground. But we have a much, much bigger book, which has every aspect of culture and heritage, and of course some nature, nature and uh, natural aspects of tourism in the kingdom. So we are looking for an, a partner and an investor in that area. We are looking to develop Kabakas Lake into a tourism center. You will need hotels on the, around and on the lake. We need um, restaurants and the like. Again, we are looking for investors in that area. We want to digitize our tourism aspects. And again, we are looking for an investor in that area. How can we have our area, our tourism digitized. And lastly, because of time, allow me to end with agriculture. Agriculture, we are looking to work with investors in farming, in processing, and in marketing. Of course, land, big chunks of land have become a challenge because of the land way management and the central government, the way they are managing land, encouraging people to come and infest land. Um, but we have tried as much as possible through Ghana Land Board to secure some pieces of land where we can do agriculture with partners in scales that where we can serve the whole Great Lakes with food. And also uh, the Middle East who are coming out to look for food from Uganda and from East Africa. Processing, a lot of opportunities in processing and also a lot of policies in marketing, especially around the region and also in the Arab world. So friends, Buganda Kingdom is open for investment, for business. We have a pedigree. We are working with multinationals. We are working with the national people. We are working with local people and regional people. There are case studies you can look at. You can do your due diligence and references. Come, bring your money and you will multiply it much faster. Thank you very much.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege to be before this august uh, audience, watching us from all over the diaspora, uh, members of the diaspora, the ladies and gentlemen of Sajavakawaka, Navazanavakawaka, working very hard and also keeping an eye constantly on things that are going on back home. My name is David Mpanga. I am the Minister for Special Duties in the Kingdom of Buganda. Uh, and one of the areas on which I'm focused and on which I have uh, responsibility is the area of federalism. Federalism is a key demand of the kingdom, a key uh, interest of the kingdom, especially since uh, restoration in 1993. It is an often used word, um, a term which we use and have even made a Chiganda word, federal. Uh, but sometimes we don't analyze it as much as we should, and sometimes uh, it leads us to have problems in meeting expectations and understanding what it is that we're looking for. If I may give you a quick and rough and ready uh, definition of federalism, federalism is an arrangement, a legal, legally premised arrangement, under which nations share power with a supranational uh, entity. Uh, federalism essentially is never neat and symmetrical. It is two or more uh, nations getting together and agreeing to place above them a superstructure, which is sometimes called the federal government, sometimes called a central government, um, which superstructure will manage uh, certain aspects that the sovereign nations would have managed for themselves. If you took uh, a simple example, look at a housing estate, uh, many of you will be familiar with these, or, uh, or a housing complex. Each unit in that complex or each unit in that estate is a sovereign nation. But the estate or the housing uh, authorities have certain overriding uh, responsibilities which have been handed over by each of these separate units for central management. So if you have a central stairwell, you have rubbish or refuse collection, you have lighting, you have uh, heating, you have uh, uh, gardens in common, all those things that would have been run independently by each unit are now run by a central authority which each, to which each of you contribute money. It might be a tenants association, it might be a housing association or something of that nature. That's what rough and ready federalism is. Sovereign nations giving up some of their sovereign rights in order that they may live together. A political writer has said that federalism exists where nations can't live without each other but must live with each other in a certain way uh, under one roof. Federalism is always a unique compromise so that there's no two, there are no two federal systems anywhere in the world that work exactly the same. It is always a compromise born out of unique political circumstances. Federalism is a means to an end, it's not an end in itself. Simply saying we're now federalism, we're now a federal uh, state, doesn't in and of itself create anything other than the beginning of a new process under which you'll be working with others, other states and a supranational uh, federal arrangement. Uh, so constantly, federalism, the states' rights and the federal rights, inter interstate rights are constantly being tested. And federalism, therefore, needs to be understood as a road, a means to get to somewhere, not a destination in and of itself. Federalism is also a label. It's better understood as one would understand the essence of what an elephant is. The blind men, the parable of the blind men who saw an elephant, who came to an elephant, touched and felt it, and each one of them gave it a different definition, depending on where they were touching, uh, comes to mind. So federalism is best understood in essence. You can have governments labeled federal, which in fact are not. You can have governments which are not labeled federal, such as the South African government or systems, better, um, which, are in, which is in fact, South Africa is in fact, essentially, 
a federal arrangement, but by reason of its history, chooses not to use the word federal. So we understand that it's important to, want to get the essence of federalism. I think it's also important that we understand that federalism is founded in legal precepts, in legal documents, mostly wherever it exists, it comes out of a written constitution. But federalism is not a legal concept. It's not a legal uh, element. It is essentially political. It is an understanding of how to govern a country and how to divide power between a sovereign nation state and a supranational federal state in order that more, more than one state may get together and live. Federalism if I may end the introduction and definition stage on this, is impossible in the absence of constitutionalism and the rule of law. If you don't have a political system that respects constitutionalism and that places the law above, above all else, above political expedience, federalism will thrive. If you have a situation where the constitution is generally bent to meet the needs of the day or the needs of a particular individual or a particular party, if you have a situation where the delicate, or the delicate balance of power, where armed uh, or, or, or other vested interests override law, override the, the rule of law, you generally tend to find federalism being impossible. It can exist in name, but generally it doesn't thrive in substance. From a historical perspective, Uganda was a federal nation at independence because Uganda is a, is a colonial state, is a colonial construct. It was made up of several sovereign nations, native African sovereign nations, that were brought together in one geographical territory, which the British chose to call Uganda, uh, bastardizing the name of Uganda Kingdom, and chose to run essentially from the geographical center, which is in Buganda. Nzenga Kabaka, Afugo Buganda, Brimulabi Wangi, Dimuangura. Buganda had a system with a Kabaka, Ruchiko, a Bataka, a Valangira, a Bakabona, a federal, a sovereign system that was essentially defended with clear demarcation of boundaries which used to change as we, we, we expanded or contracted depending on power uh, balance at the time. Uh, but since the 19th century, um, we've been under a situation of British and uh, global Western imperialist rule, if I may put it that way, and on that basis, we've had to work in Uganda. Uganda, as a British imposition, did not destroy Buganda, or Bunyoro, or Nkore, uh, or, or, or Teso, or Choli, it simply froze them in their political uh, development and in their territorial uh, existence as it was at that time, give or take, and then caused them to need to live together. That is why in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s, when there was agitation for independence, some people were saying that sovereignty should be taken back to the place from which it was taken. That is, each sovereign African nation should be restored to the place where the British imperialists found it. Others who chose to call themselves progressive or, or, or nationalists, as they were termed, said power should be left with this new colonial construct. But the Entities, the compromise that came about from that discussion was that the sovereign entities that had been Buganda, Bunyoro, Toro, Nkore, Busoga should work on a federal basis. That is, if you remember our definition in the beginning, that they should give up some of their rights to a central authority, to a federal government or a central government, and manage certain aspects for themselves under the 1962 constitution. That, it was, that is roughly what it was, until of course we know that in 1966, Obote, feeling constrained by the constitution, not wishing to adhere to constitutionalism and the rule of law, taking what were essentially political disputes 
and wishing to settle them militarily overthrew the 1966 constitution. The overthrow of the 1966 constitution saw the abolition of the federal arrangement, saw the abolition of kingdoms, saw the centralization of power in one man and one party, and saw, unfortunately, what in Uganda we are yet to banish the introduction of militarism in the body politic. Militarism essentially looks at adversaries as enemies who need to be killed. It looks at um, people who might have a different viewpoint as enemies to be crushed because that's what militaries do. They crush their enemies. They use force to get their, or the threat or the latent threat of force to get to impose their will. In politics, it's not a very useful thing because, unfortunately, it is inimical, largely inimical to the rule of law. Democracy, for example, as a popular saying goes, is not two wolves and one lamb voting for what to have for supper. It is a system which is run by the majority but takes cognizance and protects the rights of minorities. So in a situation such as this, where previously sovereign nations, which had been corralled into one state by the colonialists, now found themselves absorbed into what had become a unitary state, what had become a largely authoritarian and autocratic state. The demand for federalism was one of the things that run, we argue, the liberation struggles, which culminated in the war that took place in Luero, the Luero Triangle of Buganda, led by the Fronasa leadership, but people largely by people from this uh, region from the kingdom, who, whose primary objective was restoration of the rule of law in order that there might be a proper restoration of a federal arrangement in which we would have uh, and be able to run certain affairs and certain aspects uh, of our lives in the way that uh, we deem fit and in the way in which, as the internationally uh, recognized right to self-determination says, manage our political, economic, social affairs, social and cultural affairs without undue uh, external interference. Uh, that might include, for example, the restoration of the kingdom, uh, the restoration of traditional uh, offices and the like, and ex uh, return of ex expropriated property. Many people think that uh, the restoration of the Uganda monarchy was worth, it was a marvelous thing. But that was just the beginning, because we now had to almost restart from beginning this very ancient heritage, this very ancient kingdom, which had most of its cultural fundamentals destroyed. Buganda presently doesn't have uh, a federal doesn't have a federal arrangement because despite the restoration of the kingdom there are certain aspects of the governance in Uganda that have left the matter of federalism unresolved on the table. Our present situation is that we have been advocating for federalism for a while. It's become prone to caricature and misrepresentation as a time-worn slogan. It's been bastardized as meaning feudalism. It has been misrepresented to mean uh, a system which favors, uh, I'll be very frank here, maybe Protestant oligarchs, uh, male patriarchy that does not consider immigrants that would not like to see non-Baganda living in Uganda, in Buganda, etc., etc. To all of those things, um, I would say that we need to take cognizance of the fact that indeed Uganda is centered around Buganda and Buganda is the melting pot that Uganda perhaps ought to be. We have people from all over the country living in Uganda. We have, as Uganda, membership of the East African community. We're members of COMESA. We have uh, understandings and issues that relate to our standing in the UN and the African Union. So federalism in Uganda is a complex political question. It's not a legal or legislative drafting question. It's a complex political question and remains so, and we need to understand it as such. Federalism also, as per the definition that I gave, is not decentralization. So frequently we've been offered solutions 
or compromises that suggest a decentralized form. Decentralization being the central government giving out some of its powers. We argue, on the other hand, the sovereign power rests with the kingdom, rests with each native community. And it is those native communities that must give up some of their powers to live together uh, at the center. So we rejected the regional tier uh, compromise, for example, because we didn't feel uh, comfortable with the idea of an elected katikiro in a situation where elections are run by the central government. And I don't think there's been a non-controversial election since 1996, or since the inception of Uganda. Uh, we don't uh, want to have the kingdom's land controlled by a central entity. We don't want to be dependent on the central entity for finances. We don't want districts, which are units of the central government, to be the, uh, the legal founding block of Buganda because a district then can decide to eject itself or can be encouraged to eject itself from the Buganda Kingdom. And of course there were threats to, uh, the, of takeover by the, by the central government and indeed nationalization of cultural sites. But the major issue that we had was again still one that lay in politics, a lack of good faith. So what do we do? What's the way forward if you're thinking about how do we achieve federalism? We think that federalism will not be achieved by cheap sloganeering, uh, repeated shouting uh, about the word or the word federal itself. We need to think deeper and differently based on political realities today. We must understand the Buganda federalist agenda to be driven by issues that come from our population, but we must then engage with political parties, civil society, the population, regional and international actors to cause Uganda to move in that direction. There's no silver bullet that will bring the federal system, and any person who comes and says, I will bring you federal on his own, is, to be very honest, uh, not telling you the absolute truth. We must be talking, walking, and essentially acting the federalist agenda. We must talk coherently, consistently, and persuasively so that the population may drive the need for federal. People may see that federalism is the solution to the present uh, problems that Uganda is facing. Our work must be consistent with our talk. We must do things in a way that makes it clear that we not only ask for federalism, but we act in a way that is consistent with federalism and is consistent with inviting and bringing others on board. We need to build capacity. And that building capacity is what uh, Katikiro, Charles Peter Maiga has been doing building a de facto federal system, which sees us working very closely with the central government in areas of health, areas of agriculture, areas of education, but actually setting up this unit as the fundamental building block, which is yielding power in the other direction, and which owns the legitimacy rather than the other way around. Rather than central government giving us a bit of its power, actually us lending it some of its legitimacy, our legitimacy in order to achieve uh, uniform goals that are desirable. And indeed, that's the reason why many people now aspire to and look to the Kingdom of Buganda as an example. I mean by that kingdoms like Busoga, Bunyoro, taking in uh, lessons on how we're managing land, etc. Because that actually is building capacity to be able to manage a federal, state, a federal system. We must, it must be emphasized, limit the number of confrontations, violent confrontations, physical confrontations. Each time such confrontations happen, we lose. Both sides lose, but Buganda loses more. We lose useful citizens who would have been working in a peaceful and constructive way to achieve the federalism we're looking for, who die and may be listed or maybe are forgotten as heroes, whereas in fact uh, what we need is a live, happy, healthy population working towards federalism. Very lastly, we need to do more research designing a new political communication and engagement strategy. We need to be taking in more people. We need to be recruiting more regions. We need to be a beacon, not only for Uganda in other communities, but for Africa. This problem we're talking about here wasn't just created in Africa. It's in many countries. And we need to confront issues of uh, building a new regional, national, regional, and international alliance to achieve federalism. The alliances that we built that helped us with the restoration of the kingdom may no longer be the alliances that will help us get the next mile. 
we must find ways of getting things done in the new century and in a new way, speaking a new language to the new population, not looking in the past but looking to the future and being a prospective and useful, proactive tool for the Ugandan, for the Muganda of the 21st century. Lastly, we must build internal political awareness in all of our kingdom uh, entities uh, because wherever we are as kingdom officials, kingdom employees, wherever you are as a Muganda, you are the ambassador for federalism. You are the person who makes other people feel that federalism, understand and feel that federalism is a solution. So with all of that uh, said as quickly as I could, what do we understand? We understand that federalism is a tool, not an end in itself. It's not a destination, it's a means to an end. It's a means to an end that enables a political, complex, unique political solutions to be uh, handled between what would have been sovereign states working together, giving up some of their power in order to work together and live under the constitution, rule of law, which determines the rights of states, the rights of the federal entity. We need constitutionalism and the rule of law in order to achieve federalism. We need to address federalism as a political rather than as a legislative or legal drafting issue. We need to persuade others to join us in this struggle and we need each one of us to be an ambassador wherever we are and whatever we do for the value of federalism as a system of governance for our country. And with those words, I wish to bid you all farewell. Family and friendship, fellowship through our celebrations. We also aim to enhance the home away from home experience through our social get togethers. This helps us to strengthen our spiritual, emotional, and social bonds. In faith, we grow. If you type praisehealthcare.com into a search engine, you will find a recruitment agency specializing in supplying staff for healthcare and social care roles. Established to help with the NHS health and social care staff shortages while offering jobs catered to client lifestyles in the midst of the pandemic. So if you're unhappy with your job, want job security, want to work for the NHS or be your own boss, then join Praise today and get a job that leaves you with a smile. Even if you work here, you're a short form away from that perfect job. Or refer a friend and get paid £100 after your friend completes their first full week in the job. Rap and Sons initiated to bridge the gap between insurance providers and funeral directors serving African communities in diaspora. For your funeral cover, life insurance, serious illness cover and a lot more. For barriers in UK and repatriations to any destinations, call Rap and Sons Limited on plus 4479-887-873-89 and plus 2088-565-476. Protect your loved ones and restore your peace of mind. North London Seventh Day Adventist Family and Friends Worship invites you to join us for a family and friends Sabbath worship every Saturday of the week. Bible study and prayers start at 9:30 a.m. UK time. Your main host is Omulangida Pastor Blesias Mutebi Kalimira, supported by various guest preachers. Come pray, praise and worship the Lord, and make friends every Sabbath. Live on Zoom. Zoom ID 777-789-2020. Ori Muganda wangali da mwongeleza ni Ireland Wenyu miliza mchika ajo Ebika ye mungu mpaji Ezi fugo Buganda Abataka abakuru wa bebika Balina ababaka babwe Wano mwongeleza ni Ireland Edawe tuwogelela Ebika ebi soka mwabili Bilina ababaka babataka Mchitundu chino Eda bebatekika Emikoro jataba miluka 
Waba taka mbungiriza ni Ireland Wangu mibili mkumi na msambu Wamu nengu mibili mkumi na mnala Ya wafi Emigasu ejiri mkunga nila wamu mbikabia foji manyi Okuyige nsubuko za fe No kuyiga okutambula ngu mganda Obaseru ganda Oba muno mkabi Okubuli lila Okuyigiriza No kutula msonga Gamba obasenga Oba oba koja Okutuma manya Abana ba fe Obuta wasangana Okusisinkana Na emiga semina la minji ntoko Tojimalayo, bubato manyi mubaka uwa mkulu wa chikacho, uwa e chikacho tichinina wa kufuna mubaka, tuukilida omukubiliza uluchiko luno, salo ngu jofle chibuka. Kuzero musambu muenda na mukaga, musambu musatu muenda, mukaga musambu zero. Hello, my name is Rachel Nawude. I'm just here to bring you an update of what we've been up to in East London, Bendo Bendo, here in Buganda, UK. As you know, we uh, invited you um, to come and take part in our Luganda classes um, run by Sitagede Foundation Luganda Virtual Academy. The classes started this month in, um, in November 2020 and the classes are going very well. Uh, we've got two classes running at the moment, um, one for the children, uh, the children who can read and write. So that one is running on a Sunday evening from 6 to 8. And the youth and adult classes are running on a Thursday evening from 8 to 10 o'clock. Um, the classes are really, really enjoyable. The young people are learning and we are also learning from them and we're picking up ideas. Everyone is learning from, from each other. So the syllabus that we are using um, with this um, learning is uh, Sitagede. You know our book, Sitagede. This is the hard copy and the hard cover copy and then the soft cover uh, copy. This one is for £15 and this is for £20 and our promise is that we will absorb the um, the postage and parking um, fees. So all our learners, if you will not need to pay for the, um, for the postage and parking fees. So if you'd like to come and join us, we still have a few places left for on both classes. Um, as you know, classes must be of a certain size and it's filling up very quickly. But for those of you who still want to send their children or for the young adult who would like to come and start learning Luganda, please do get in contact with us very quickly um, by writing to elandan at bugandauk.com. So let us learn together, let us develop this program together and we are so excited with the way things are going. So hopefully we will see you in class. Twenty-one-year-old, <laughs> E chintu ochivuga, buli chintu chigenda bulungi ndo uzabantu wona baudira bulungi e sanyu dioneri genda maso. Panango mtabalu isayo, tulina um, program ya fe, eduka bulungi. Kati musession ye, mchitundu chino, tulina ebibuzo, questions and answers. Kati ebibuzo bino, bigenda tu letewa, um, bigenda kudibuamu. Abantu abebiti wababili betuli na kumukolo uluwa lero. Njagade mbanjulide OHT wa Robert Wagwa Nsivira. Ono nga yemu miuka uwo kubidi uwa katikio era omuwanika. Era tulina OHT wa David Mpanga. Butu ulide ngatuo vako bulu njenyo kufedero. Tugenda kubera ne mwami Joel Chibazo, nga yanabe la moderator wa fe, mchisera chino. Mwami Joel Chibazo, ha, oliku kumpewo? Yes.
tukusanyu kidenyo sebo tukusanyu kidedala sebo twala ovunanzwa wewe Good morning to everybody. I think the introductions have been made. My name is Joel Kibazo, as you've probably heard. And, but I think this is really more about getting the questions uh, on board that everybody wants answered rather than anything else in this rather gray and dull London compared to the summer of the weather I was enjoying just days ago with OHT Buampanga in uh, sunny Uganda, but that as it may. Um, I'm going to start off by asking uh, each of the uh, our two um, guests uh, the, the first uh, question for me, and then we've got a flood of questions that have come in. So if I start with uh, OHT, uh, Robert Wagwan Sibirua. So the, the question I would like to first pose to you, especially when it comes to the issue of investments, is one of confidence. You've urged us to sort of invest as the diaspora, and you've laid out a whole a whole number of uh, possible areas from Mirembe Villas right through to education, digital. Um, but how can we be confident of our, uh, that our, our investment will be safe and that we will get the returns that we, we, that we seek as opposed to investing anywhere else? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chivazo and um, Namusa HT1. Aba where is that? Babazan, I was a Jabakawaka, Baliku convention in. Subject of video young, Kuanga connectivity, we was over there called video Tawana. Um, so we have been, I have been a minister for finance, investment, planning, and economic development for close to seven years now. And um, we have done several investments um, in the kingdom with different partners. I oh, can only speak... Mr. Chibaza, do I speak in Uganda or English? Uh, other my, than my, my, my instructions are that you speak in English so that uh, everybody understands. Otherwise, I would have used Luganda as well. So please proceed in English. Uh, thank you for that guidance. Um, I could be comfortable in both uh, languages. <laughs> so, um, 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 so I can only speak from experience. I think that's the best teacher. We have had seven years where we have had investments in the kingdom, both um, commercial investments and also social investments of a social nature uh, through CBS Poesa and, uh, and Sarkoz. Um, in, in the kingdom and Mwanyiterimba uh, program and initiative. And um, we, we are seeing progress on all fronts. We are seeing our partners have not complained on, on the, in terms of returns. The kingdom has seen growth in terms of the things we have been able to do in seven years. Definitely, um, uh, we're looking at the legal framework, the financial framework and the political challenges there is always a risk, but um, um, we who are here and who have been here in this country we wouldn't be persuading you to do that if we thought otherwise. There are risks, but also the returns are good, and the returns and risks uh, can uh, re risk can be mitigated. And over the seven years, we have not had any partner or any investment where we have felt they have been adversely affected. Um, for the kingdom, and, and I've seen some questions on the chat, but I'll take your guidance. For mm -hmm. example, we did invest three years ago in the television uh, as a kingdom. And um, every year the, the television has been growing. And it has, apart from the, we have not maybe got dividends yet, but it has been wonderful in terms of informing the public and putting the Buganda agenda in the right space in uh, that media side. So we haven't suffered any setback that I'm able to talk about in the last seven years when I've been involved in the investment in the kingdom. But there are risks like any country, even in London, there could be risks, you know. The pandemic can put you down. Um, this and that can put you down. But, you know, as the saying goes, high risk, high return. Mm -hmm. So to conclude on that, um, I would say, please come and invest back home. 
it's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, OHT. We're turning to you, OHT, with uh, David Mpanga. Um, you, you laid out what uh, federalism is and what federal is, and thank you for that guidance on what are the nitty gritty points of uh, federalism, which many of us had not fully understood. But is this a reality or are we chasing a pipe dream? You know, is it an aspiration or do you see it as something that might actually happen one day? Thank you very much, Joe. And um, please permit me to first greet everybody in Luganda. We were instructed by the organizers to speak English, but I yeah. see that Mr. Sully was very upset that uh, Buganda <laughs> Kingdom business is being conducted in a foreign language. the <laughs> Uh, uh, the federalism aspiration is not a pipe dream, in my view, Joe. Um, it's something that we need because if you took Uganda to be an experiment um, and were truthful about the results, I think everybody would agree that the results are not good. Um, we've been independent for 57 years or so, uh, yeah, 57, 58 years. Um, and all we've done, to be very honest, a lot of the time has been fight in one corner or one part of the country or other, or the whole country. Um, we've had disputes around uh, the distribution of the so-called national cake. Mm -hmm. We've had people who masquerade as uh, nationalists, but who are to the core of their being uh, sectarian and who treat national uh, power as a means of ensuring that they and their own people uh, obtain uh, the life uh, more abundant at the expense of others. So the question is often asked, who or when was there a, when was there a conference or a meeting where the Karamojong sat down and said, for all the resources that you take out of Karamoja, you can take the money, invest it in Buganda, use it to build roads in Western Uganda, uh, maybe, put a little bit in uh, Northwestern Uganda and whatever's left, we the Karima Jong will be happy to come and beg on your streets in Kampala to get some of that wealth, which, is, which came from our soil. Um, a similar question can be asked from any part of the, any corner of the country. We don't know, none of our forefathers were involved in the demarcation of the boundaries that have become Uganda, knowingly involved. Um, the, map that tells us whether Majingo Island is in Uganda or is in Kenya is in London. And when we had that dispute with Kenya, we had to come to London to find out about where is this border and why does it run in one way or other? Mm -hmm. um, so if we're truthful about the results, Uganda has not been a good experiment. Um, if we're truthful about uh, the reason why Uganda has not been a good experiment is because although each native community that's locked up um, in this arrangement, is desirous of essentially the same things. We pretend that things can be run from the center uh, to the satisfaction of everybody and create this terrible uh, um, fight at the center for power. So that people say I'm fighting uh, the national, call it whatever you want. I was about to say what it was, fill in the gaps, three letters. Um, but it's not national, it's, 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 it's high command can discuss everything in Luganda, like Mr. in his own language, like Mr. Sari was asking us to speak here in Luganda. And if we were to be truthful, therefore, why would an Acholi want to remain in a system um, where power is going to be hogged at the center um, at his or her expense um, in order that they will not get anything unless they're controlling power in interior? Why would anybody from uh, Lumino, from Koboko want to remain in an arrangement where they have to fight for power in the center. So if one then turns to the truth and says, these are our native building blocks, there are native units 
we got them, we were with them and they speak to us in more ways than one. They give us our naming system, our, everything is in there. Our philosophy is found within them. Why don't we use those as the building blocks that take some of their power and seed it to the center? So that we may then agree, what powers do we want to see to the center? Um, Buganda may want to keep most of his powers. Karamoja may want, we happy to cede a lot of his powers. In order that we may get this happy uh, compromise that enables us to actually run things that we want to run closer to home, closer to home, and cede those which we're happy to cede up to above uh, to the central authority. So it's not, to my mind, a pipe dream. It's how we dress it up. It's how yeah. we look at it. And uh, the fact that the union, uh, the centralized system has crowded out everybody and told, and perhaps persuaded us that this is a pipe dream is largely a function of its results not being presented um, in their truth. If their results are presented in their truth, if our tools of analysis are, if our lenses of analysis are clear, I think federalism is a realistic aspiration. Thank you very much. Okay, there's a question here from Naukera. How are the investments that have been outlined by Mawechiwa uh, 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 uh helping the ordinary person? In other words, uh, she, she, talk, she talks about uh, the talk here is of the 300 luxury villas. These are not what ordinary people need. So what is the ministry doing about uplifting the ordinary Muganda and uh, Baganda? So Seba Mawechiwa. Is he uh, on? Th thank okay. you very much, um, um, Mr. Chivazo and uh, Madam Nabukera. Um, when um, I talked about investment, I talked about commercial investments, but allow me just highlight very quickly the social investments and also the commercial investments that are targeting the Baganda or people in Buganda that uh, she has asked about. I'll run very quickly that um, what this is the strategy of the kingdom. Um, Sema Songa Eyokuna is about transforming the social and economic lives of the people of Buganda through education, health, and income generation. So focusing on that, we have four areas that the kingdom has been working on and has been greatly successful and that we are scaling up. The first one is financial inclusion. CBS Poesa Sako and, uh, and Sibirio Sako have been growing year on year. CBS Poesa Sako has grown to an extent that we have had to split it and take it to Masaza. Now we have a CBS Poesa Budu, Chad Dondo, Busiro, and we are starting Chagwe and others. This, the theme here with Sibirio Sako, which is for the youth, is the FISA. Tereka Siga, save, invest, uh, invest uh, so that you grow. We have seen tremendous work there in terms of especially women and youth engaging in productivity using uh, CBS Poesa. And when you come, if you ever come to Uganda and there is a CBS Poesa fair, you could go there and you'll see the real transformation of these ordinary Baganda and Ugandans in the way they have been able to go in their communities, find what they can produce and find where, how to sell it. And uh, CBS Poesa, beyond supporting them to produce goods or services, they also support them to do market linkage through the fair and other programs like going to Dubai once a year. And this has been very, very successful. The portfolios have been growing that's why we had to split CBS Poesa from the center into the Masazas. Um, currently, about half a million households um, are in CBS Poesa in Buganda. And that translates to about maybe 3.54 million people, given a, an average of a household in, in Buganda between six to eight people in a household. That's number one. That's the program we are supporting. That's a program that's growing. That's a program where we are even putting now fintech so that people can save online, withdraw money online, and the like. And uh, if it was only for the pandemic, the kingdom was working very hard to have the group of these, these um, 
CBS Poesa alumni travel for the uh, the fair that was supposed to, the, to be in Dubai. The second one has been a very successful Mwanyitirimba program, a program, an initiative uh, supporting people in Uganda to go back in coffee growing. It has been running for four years. And um, 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 if uh, I had known, I would have shared the figures. In the last four years, coffee growing in Uganda has gone up by 30%. And the kingdom has supported the farmers in Uganda with 10 million seedlings. The kingdom is training extension workers and supporting uh, these, these farmers with um, agronomical practices. The kingdom is establishing nurseries for matoke, for coffee at every Saza. So that is investing in the ordinary Muganda or Ugandan who is living in Buganda. And these people can't do humanitarian, but they can't save in Poesa if they are not healthy. So the other strategy is to emphasize public health and His Majesty and the, the, his leadership has been in the forefront of promoting health programs, fistula, sickle cells, AIDS, and so on. Um, they have been at the forefront of supporting mosquito net distribution, supporting immunization, so that people are healthy and are able to take advantage of these programs like Manjitirimba, which has been so successful. Manjitirimba goes with even Matoke. We are encouraging people to grow coffee and Matoke. And uh, at the same time, the CBS Poesa now has moved into starting what we call multi-purpose societies, whereby there is a financial society, which is CBS Poesa, and a, another one which pro buys produce and trades it. So those are the programs in the Sema Songe Yokuna that are being pushed. Of course, we are sinking boreholes in the masazas that have no water, in what we call the catacolido masazas of Singo and uh, Kabula and the like. With Wells of Life, we planned 100 boreholes. We have sunk 50. Provide water because people need clean water to be healthy, to take advantage of all this. Uh, lastly, we are we are the companies have started through the investments like the schools like the television or radio all that we are providing jobs to uh, close to 10,000 young men and women directly and indirectly as a kingdom and when you do that you know that another eight people are going to be able to be looked after through ngule rendo and all that they are participating in the distribution and value chain and and they are, they are getting jobs to be able to distribute and also earn something from that. And lastly, under the social safety net, His Majesty is now building houses for the most vulnerable in our communities. We are partnering with Habitat for Humanity and we'll be planning to build 20 houses every year for the vulnerable who can't even participate in these programs. There could be homes headed by uh, young people who lost all their parents through the pandemic of AIDS or the which could be somebody who became disabled and he has no spine, he can't work, can be like the people on eighth, the catechism is going to break ground for two houses in Maokota. And these are for people, there is an old woman who was left with 10 children by her children. So she's looking after 10 grandchildren and she's living in a makeshift uh, mud and water. So we have social investments that we have made for youth and women in the kingdom, and they are doing very, very well. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Before I go to um, Nawesti Wampanga, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, so that um, the question here came that can diaspora invest in the circles and powesas? Yes, they can. And um, we are, what we are gonna do is through K2 Telecom, we yeah. are working and finalizing a FinTech uh, right. framework where mm -hmm. they can save from wherever they are using that plot, uh, platform on the internet or otherwise, and they can invest if they wish. So we've, we believe that they can save and, and all these circles there by law, they are supposed to get their dividends every year. So they will be able to save just on their phone or from the website within the next six months when we finalize the FinTech model for the two circles of CBS Poesa and Sublio Sarko.
Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, turning to OHT David Impanga, um, there's a question here from Robert Kavuma. Since the rejection of the previously dangled tier system, that has been, what has been what is being done towards striving to achieve the objectives of federal? In other words, what are the concrete plans that you have in place for trying to for uh, for at least uh, achieving federal as you as you laid out? End of time, Joel. Uh, two more questions, and sure. then we go to the next item. Sure, sure. Thank you. Very quickly, that's a very good question, Mr. Kavuma. Um, the main thing that we've been doing is we've been building capacity. Um, often, and I've given this talk on, on a number of occasions, uh, mostly in Uganda, I've referred to a conversation that I had one evening after the cabinet meeting uh, with two ministers who then included, who included the Katikiro, now Katikiro, who was then a minister. Um, and I said one of the worst things that could happen to us was the sudden delivery of Federal, which we had been agitating for for a long time. And this delivery, if you may picture the situation, the scene, uh, as a big trailer truck uh, tipping over a large whale and dumping it in the Ulange ground and <laughs> saying, there's Federal, you, you've been looking for it for a long time. Uh, if we use the English language, I think the more uh, frequently used analogy is the dog that catches the bus. If the dog has been chasing the bus for long, along this junction, always confident that the bus will leave it behind. Yeah. What does it do when it eventually catches the bus? So you need to get capacity to be able to deal with a situation if that situation is to come to be. So we've been building local government units. They're very functional. I was previously in a previous iteration uh, of cabinet, the Minister of Local Government. And I can tell you that uh, Amasaza and Miruka, uh, Amasaza, Amagombola and Miruka work very well. Um, we have officials who have learned how uh, to manage their systems. Um, and that means, therefore, that if there is a situation where we can turn, we have to turn quickly um, to uh, a, a federal arrangement, that capacity is there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the business, uh, the, 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 the finance and planning uh, function that OHT World has been, has been uh, laying out very well. Those para, uh, entities that he talks about, um, BICAL, CBS, uh, BBS, um, the, 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 the various special purpose uh, project vehicles that have been built, um, all those are your SOEs in a federal arrangement. Um, should that happen, um, they should be able to stride out and move quickly. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, social development, the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health, is a, is a, a, which is together with gender uh, and other social development uh, departments, is a very effective tool for uh, the upliftment of the social uh, and economic situation of our people. Um, that again has been driving together with the, the, the government, the central government Ministry of Health, uh, vaccination programs has been driving uh, distribution of uh, malaria nets, et cetera. That, all of those things, in my view, build the capacity, give us the ability to get big knives, uh, firewood, uh, cooking tools for this whale when the whale lands in, on our doorstep. We need to be mm -hmm. able to chop it up uh, uh, and, and, and cook it quickly. Um, lastly, we've also been uh, doing a lot of market research on how to campaign for federalism in the 21st century. Um, we've learned a lot from it that it's a word that we've been throwing around, but many times it's, we've not realized this exclusionary effect purely on account of the uh, narrative that was built around it uh, previously, um, we haven't realized that when you say federalism and it's heard by a younger person, often they think about old people looking for a glory time <laughs> of the 50s that they can't achieve again. Um, when it's heard by younger women, they think of a situation where men are asking women to kneel down and keep quiet. They don't see themselves in that arrangement. We need to give them, uh, so we're working on messaging and also recalibrating in order that people can see that this is their solution. Um, and as I say, fundamentally understand it as a political question, a political solution to the political problems that we have right now. So that's what we've been doing, Robert. Okay, I think uh, as, as you probably heard, the sort of is a sort of last question time, which will go to OHT Wa Wa Guan Sibira, which is that um, Joy Chieune is asking about. She'd like to have some information on social investment projects. 
Uh, social investment projects. Um, um, I did, I don't know whether I should repeat myself briefly, but um, what we are looking at as social investments um, are investments in micro uh, enterprises back home. And the micro enterprises, uh, the main area where we can support them is by saving with CBS Poesa Circle, by saving with Subidio Circle, because the many and most of the people involved in that are all in micro enterprises, not even small and medium, no, but mainly 90% are micro entrepreneurs. That's the place where we need to continue supporting. The other group where we need to do um, social enterprise is in the farmer groups or producer groups. Uh, His Majesty is encouraging us to form and support existing producer groups because it's easy now to leverage resources to support them with inputs and marketing. So if we are talking about cooperatives or farm associations, that's another area which we are uh, supporting through Bukadev to information of them and even supporting those which are already uh, formed. That's where uh, social investment can go. So it is in uh, uh, CBS Poesa Circle, in uh, Subidio Circle, and in producer associations. Great, 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 great. Um, just before I close, I'd uh, just like to sort of urge uh, sort of uh, our two speakers this morning who have done very well to sort of uh, answer each of those um, questions directly. The conversation, there's a lot more questions on the chat. Some of you, and I know that um, uh, uh, HD Wagwan Sibira has already started answering some of those questions. I'd also urge, I'd urge you to sort of all look on the chat and uh, some of those answers will come. Same with uh, HD Wagwan David Mpanga, if you could sort of also look at some of those questions and uh, answer, and sort of respond to, to many of those as much as you could. But at least uh, for the moment, all that remains for me is to thank both uh, our speakers uh, uh, who are presenters for this morning, Robert Wawichiwa, Robert Wawon Sibira and Wawichiwa David Mpanga. Thank you very much for your contributions. We in the diaspora appreciate it. And that's all for me. I'm Joel Kibazo. And now I hand over back to James.